Welcome to the first Tepa Storm meta snapshot breakdown in the Year of the Dragon. As always with rotations, the meta is entirely different than it once was before. The previous expansions, which rotated out, had a lot of powerful cards, especially the Death Knights, and the later expansions were much weaker. With the stronger cards leaving the game, the overall power level of decks is much lower. The majority of decks are of a similar strength currently, but some are significantly better than others. Warrior and Rogue are overtuned and simply have access to too many things currently, making them the clear powerhouses thus far. With Warrior having access to one of the only remaining hero cards in Dr. Boom, Mad Genius, the class has one of the best value generation tools in Standard. While Rogue does not have a hero card, the class has one of, if not the, best classic set, alongside having received valuable cards with this expansion. Before we look at what archetypes comprise the top tier, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more Tepa Storm news and Hearthstone content. Now let's jump right in. In tier 1, Control Warrior is an archetype that always finds a way into the meta. Due to the natural, slow playstyle the Warrior Classic cards has, the class always manages to be fairly defensive. Even if the meta isn't as aggressive, Control Warrior is never far from being relevant. As with all the Warrior decks, Control Warrior makes use of Dr. Boom the Mad Genius to provide an insane amount of value. Mirrors are decided by who draws Boom first, and other games are often forced to fatigue. Due to Archivist Elysiana, it's near impossible for any deck to compete with Control Warrior in fatigue without running it as well. This means the opposing decks need to find a way to apply a large amount of pressure and prevent the warrior from stabilizing. Control Warrior does well in a lot of matchups, but its best ones come from aggressive decks that can't compete with the defensive tool the warrior has access to. Zoo Warlock and Tempo Rogue both struggle with the warrior's armor gain and removal, leaving them unfavored in this matchup. As for decks that beat Control Warrior, Mech Hunter and Khadgar Mage both bully the deck with the continued pressure that they can apply. The Hunter has access to a lot of Death Rattles, which the Warrior struggles with, and the Mage can make large minions consistently, which are too hard for the Warrior to easily clear after both brawls are used. Also in Tier 1, Tempo Rogue is one of the decks that many people feel very strongly about as of late. Rogue has always had the best classic set, with their cards just being too strong all around. Preparation has always enabled very powerful combos, and it still continues to do so. Raiding Party alongside Preparation allows for Rogue to tutor its threats very consistently. The Rogue has also a very powerful draw engine in Mira's unstable element, giving them a way to close out the game reliably. Tempo Rogue preys on the slower decks that are built to beat Warrior, such as Mech Hunter and Khadgar Mage. Both of these decks can't contest the Rogue's pressure, and have to rely on the Rogue missing their key turns in order to find a win. On the other hand, Rogue struggles against Control Warrior and Token Druid. The Warrior can outlast the Rogue's pressure, and the Token Druid can fight off the Rogue's board, while stabilizing threats of their own. Dragon Warrior is another archetype that players may remember from the past. The previous build of Dragon Warrior was more of a mid-range archetype, as opposed to the control shell that it currently has. While Dragon Warrior still runs mid-range threats, it has the premium control tools that make Warriors such a strong and defensive class. Dragon Warrior does well against Control Warrior, as it has less dead cards in the matchups, and can use dragons to pressure out the Warrior before the game reaches the fatigue state. In terms of bad matchups, Dragon Warrior struggles against Token Druid and decks that can apply near endless pressure. While Dragon Warrior does have removal and minions to contest the board, the Druid can build more boards than you can usually deal with, making the matchup problematic. Bomb Warrior is an archetype many players aren't happy to see, as it can feel very random at times. While none of the cards are inherently built around RNG, the effect of shuffling and drawing a bomb can be very random. This archetype is a control deck that has a tempo play style in control matchups, aimed to apply pressure and use threats to keep your opponent at bay until they draw their bombs. If your opponent manages to not draw the bombs, then Blastmaster Boom will help to close out the game by adding several threats onto the board at once. Bomb Warrior has a lot of good matchups, but it does exceptionally well against Control Shaman. The deck simply can't compete with the value you have, and added threats from the bombs help to close out the game. As with most warrior archetypes, Bomb Warrior struggles to beat both Death Rattle Hunter and Cadgar Mage. Both decks are built to beat slower forms of Warrior, and they continue to prove that they can do that. Token Druid is the only Druid archetype found above Tier 4. 
If it weren't for the previous nerfs to wild growth and nourish, we'd probably see a slower form of druid still in charge of ladder. Token Druid makes use of the spells that summon several minions at once, alongside board buffs that Druid has access to. With these together, the Druid can usually build a sticky board and outpressure its opponent. Token Druid is an archetype that has been around before, and while its playstyle involves less ramp now than previously, it's still the same kind of deck that has the same strengths and weaknesses. Token Druid struggles against decks that can fight the board easily, or ones with continuous board wipes. There aren't many decks that can beat it on board, aside from Zoo Warlock. Thanks to Magic Carpet, Zoo can retake the board using its cheap minions, allowing it to always have a presence that the Druid simply can't beat. Control Shaman is one of the only decks that has access to enough board wipes to beat Token Druid. Token Druid's strength comes from making boards out of nothing, and making them hard to clear with Soul of the Forest. Thief Rogue and slower forms of Warrior struggle to deal with this. While you'd think that the slower warriors would excel in this matchup, they simply lack the removal to continuously clear the boards, and eventually will be outpressured. Tier 2 features the same amount of decks as Tier 1 does this time around, which is slightly surprising. Typically, Tier 2 is much larger than Tier 1, as all of the near misses fall into it. Tier 2 decks this time around are a mix of strong decks and decks simply designed around beating the top tier. The top deck in Tier 2 this week is Thief Rogue. Many players have wanted this archetype to be more than simply a meme for a long while now, and their prayers have finally been answered. With Blizzard printing many cards for the archetype, it found a spot in the meta. While it struggles against Warrior, with enough luck, the deck can find a win in almost any spot. The deck abuses slower decks, such as Mech Hunter and Khadgar Mage, as it can generate enough value to outlast anything that they throw at the Rogue. Following Thief Rogue is Zoo Warlock. Much like Control Warrior, Zoo is an archetype that simply won't die. With every expansion, Zoo finds a way to make an appearance into the meta. While it usually gets weaker as time goes on, the deck is always around. Zoo Warlock still has the same issues that it did before, and struggles against control decks. With Warrior being so powerful currently, it's likely that Zoo will struggle more and more as time progresses. With how much the meta is still changing, it's hard to accurately pinpoint what decks you want to target in order to climb the fastest. One thing remains consistent though, and that's that Warrior is flooding the high ranks. Many high-level players are doing everything they can to find decks that consistently beat Warrior. The main strategy they're employing right now is playing Mech Hunter or Khadgar Mage. Both of these decks can apply pressure that the Warriors can't keep up with. With Mech Hunter, you have access to sticky Death Rattle minions that Warrior struggles to clear. With Mage, you can summon really large minions over and over again until the Warrior falls to the threats. If you're looking for a different way to target the meta, consider playing Mech Paladin. This deck is fairly new, and its power level is hard to define as of now, but it definitely beats Warrior. Much like Mech Hunter, this Paladin archetype has a lot of sticky minions that leave the Paladin with constant threats. If the opponent manages to get through all of your threats, you can use Kangor's Endless Army to generate even more. Make sure to focus on magnetizing your minions together to keep your resurrect pool filled only with high quality minions. In conclusion, while the meta is still changing daily, Warrior and Rogue seem to be the clear winners of the Rise of Shadows expansion. They both have several competitive archetypes, and the classes seem to be levels ahead of the others. It'll be interesting to see where the meta takes us a few weeks from now, and it's sure to change with the HCT World Championship coming up. What decks have you been having the most success with so far? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and once again, make sure you're subscribed to the channel to keep up with our Hearthstone content in the latest expansion. We'll see you next time.